This is episode number 63 with Nathaniel Zerbrug. If you're someone who wants to make major changes in their life, someone who wants to achieve their goals, or maybe you're someone who knows this is not as good as it gets, but you have no idea where to start, on the Reinvent You podcast, we explore different types of people, their successes and failures and how they reinvented themselves to create the life they love. It's our hope that from hearing their stories that you too may have more insight into what it takes to build a life that you envision for yourself. Here to help you do that is performance and life coach, Travia Stewart. My guest today on the podcast is a man who has lived a life that started with incurable chronic illness, a medical prognosis that he couldn't be able to walk, talk, or amount to anything, and that he should be dead six times by now. To today, he's an entrepreneur. He's an award-winning global inspirational speaker and a victorious mindset mentor. And on the podcast today, we discuss how he developed his victorious mindset, how he helps his clients live an unlimited life, and the, and the importance of never, ever giving up despite the odds. You're in for a treat. You are in for some inspiration and motivation. And this guy has it all. Woman, well, welcome to the to the Reinvent You podcast. My guest, Nathaniel Zerbrook. My man, he's a, he's in Switzerland, and I'm so excited to have this conversation. So I just want to take a moment and say, welcome, Nathaniel. Hey, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you everybody for listening and you, Travia, for hosting. I'm so excited to be here and. Um, yeah, to just pack up the day today in Switzerland with an go. amazing podcast. Yes, yes. I love to podcast. And, and you know, guys, like we are recording this. It's 10 a.m. for me, but it's 7 p.m. for Nathaniel. So, but, you know, the possibility that that Zoom allows us to have is just incredible. So I'm glad and I'm so thankful and so grateful to be able to connect with Nathaniel, who's all the way in Switzerland. So... Guys, I was so enthralled by Nathaniel's story of overcoming every single thing that he's gone through. And so many of us go, oh, my fingernail broke today. So now I can't do the thing that I got up to do. I can't work on my business. Oh, I don't really have the energy. How am I going to build a business? How am I going to do this thing? And so Nathaniel, I would love for you to begin by just introducing who you are and then jump right into your story of, with my goodness, you have overcome so much. And I know it's going to be so motivational. It's already for me. And I know it's going to be so motivational for my listener. So if you could just start with who you are and a bit of your story, I would love that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm pleased to do that. So yeah, I'm not Daniel, as you heard already. I'm, the, I'm living in Switzerland. I grew up in Switzerland. I was born in Switzerland, but I haven't been always uh, here in Switzerland because um, I realized early on with all my difficulties that uh, it's quite a small country, you know. Yeah, I, I need big stuff. I need, <laughs> I <Yeah>. need, uh, <laughs> I need a big horizon. <laughs> so I moved to Australia. That was back in uh, 2012 for four and a half years, and uh, so I'm back here since 2017. Um, it was a bit unexpectedly, but um, sometimes life just, you know, goes the way it goes, and uh, yeah. But um, yeah, it's interesting. As you said in the beginning, my, my story is uh, amazing, incredible, and inspirational. Um, I often feel not myself that, I'm, that I lived in that too, because it sounds different to who I am today and what I do today than who I was and what I did in the past. And uh, it's, it's sometimes, to be honest, even uh, difficult to relate for myself, mm -hmm. for, for all the good things that happened, um, especially in the last 15 years. And uh, I'm going to share you a little bit about the previous first 15 years of my life. Um, 
I was uh, diagnosed with a complicated chronic illness with one year old, which affected my own kidneys. Um, my kidneys had to be removed. I had to start doing a, you know, um, dialysis treatment, which everybody has to do as soon as the kidney isn't working anymore as it should. And so, but it wasn't, you know, it was a hard time, but, but probably the hardest time was when um, I was about three years old. And then there was the time when I had a stroke. All of a sudden I was losing literally my mind. Um, I was at home. Uh, my parents weren't at home. Um, my, my brother realized something was going on here with me and called my mom. Um, they brought me to the hospital directly into the ITU. I was fell into the coma for the next two weeks. Wow. And the interesting thing was that at the end of those two weeks, my doctors called my parents and told them, hey, look, um, there's nothing else we can do. The, my, my brain has been a gray patch. It basically was, was literally, it was dead by that time. And so my parents come into ICU in expectancy basically to, to farewell my life. And as I said in the beginning, life goes sometimes the way it goes. And the doctors turned off the machines, all the life supporting machines, uh, because there was, there was no reason to continue. And then all of a sudden, the moment they turned off the machine, I started to talk again. <laughs> out of the blue, oh <laughs> out of the, of the blue, and nobody was expecting that. It was like, it was the biggest miracle um, that especially, yeah, I heard or experienced in my life. And um, so it continued like that um, for a little while. I, I recovered, I had to recover. I was, I was coming back. Uh, Fall back, fell back into the coma, come back, and it took me about a couple months to recover. And things went on with, um, you know, dialysis treatment. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make a jump a little bit. I had about um, three kidney transplant with five, seven, and 11 years old. And for me, what that means, um, is that I never experienced a life before that like everybody else did or most of the children did in that time mm -hmm. because I had all the sudden a kidney and I realized that I can do anything. I can eat everything. I don't have to go to the hospital three times a week for dialysis treatment. And that was amazing flourishing dream time and um, so this happened three times and I want to jump to one of the second kidney transplant that I had with seven years old up to nine year old and it was um, crazy because after two and a half years of living the dream of flourishing of of understanding that there's a different life all of a sudden my kidney got destroyed again and I had to readapt to my old life of getting into different eating habits, getting into different schedules to go back to dialysis treatment. And it was so depressional for me. I remember the time I come home after removing the kidney, realizing, okay, there is you know, I should lost my best friend. That was my uh, mantra. And uh, so there was a time I was depressional for two weeks. I remember the time I was on the couch in my parents' living room. I didn't eat anything for two weeks. Two weeks. I didn't talk anything. Um, and I just almost didn't move. Just was lying there on the couch. And, and you know what, what it does with an 
nine-year-old boy um, who isn't yet that much, uh, you know, hasn't had that much growth in, in his brain and all that, you, you realize that, well, everything is against me. Why does that happen to me? Why, why would I want to be still alive? And there was a time actually when all the negative talks had such a power that I had nothing else in my mind to take my own life. And I was so blessed with my parents. They realized that, you know, there's something not well going on. Mm -hmm. And so we had a lot of, you know, pastoral care and psychological stuff, and which got me back on track. And then, so these were two events that I always that I will always remember that mm -hmm. I had the most transformational point. But as well, it was the lowest point of my life. And I have to tell you, like after this, you know, I told you that 15 years were pretty bad, the first 15 years. And after age 15, everything becomes stable with a lot of growth, with a lot of um potential now today i'm turning 33 in november and uh, if i look back i can say um after so many 40 operations uh for thousands of standard life saving treatment shouldn't be alive for six times by now hearing impaired about 80 to 85 percent um i'm i'm living fully the life and uh, living the unlimited life that I believe God has called me to, to live. And uh, I, I believe that there's so much more for everybody out there, whether you have, uh, you know, a crazy medical story or, or whether you are um, just, you feel like you're a simple, ordinary person. It doesn't matter. There's so much more for everybody out there. And uh, I believe that for, for you listeners as well, because oh, whatever is um, psychologically seen below the brain, there are no limitations to the mind, mm -hmm. except the ones we acknowledge. And uh, this is something that I could probably probably the, the biggest lesson that I learned that everything is possible and uh, everybody has the potential, the unlimited potential. Wow, I love that. Your story, good night. So, I, you know, just to break it down a little bit, what was the age and like when you were like, they turned off the machines, you were brain dead? Like how old I, I were you then? Yeah, I was about three and a half. Three and a half. Wow. And did they use the words that he's brain dead? Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, absolutely. And th there's one thing that, that I uh, realized. Uh, it took me a long time to realize, but um, my parents once shared that before they turned off the machines, uh, especially my mom talks a lot of words to my life, mm -hmm. words of faith. And uh, it's, it's one thing, um, you know, I believe that the words have power that can either uh, destroy or build up a life. And uh, I love that because uh, words are simple and they, they just can flow. And uh, that's one of the reasons I become an inspirational speaker, because I know today for me, it's like getting up that whenever I speak, I want to speak in an inspirational tune and build up people's life because I realize what it has done um, in my life. Right. So you think so. Do you remember, like, so it was your mother speaking the inspiration through her words, like willing you with the language to wake up, to let's, let's go, get up out of that bed. Let's start talking right now. Did you say it was uh, your mother? No, I don't exactly what she said. Um, but the weird thing is that when you're in a coma, um, you know what's going on mm. around you. 
mm-hmm. but it takes you a long time to you know it's like a puzzle in your mind where you over years you have to 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 put the different puzzles of pictures together in order right. to understand what's happened then um so you are there but you're not dead <laughs> right right got it got it so can we now give it a little bit to the age of nine and so my question for you is I honestly, and maybe it's because I just haven't experienced it personally, but I haven't even heard any example of a nine-year-old wanting to end his life. Because generally, as a child, you think unlimited, we're dreaming, we're thinking of all these possibilities. Would you say that that was your lowest moment that you can recall in your 33 years? And what do you think like, was the catalyst for you going, I just don't want to do this anymore? A uh, great question. Yeah, it, it it absolutely was the lowest point for me, um, because when you realize that you dream about something and then you have to dream, and then you all of a sudden the dream stops, mm-hmm. and it was at that time it was already the second time that I lost a transplanted kidney. Mm-hmm. So actually the third time I, I lost, firstly my own, then the sec- first one only lasted for 24 hours. And then the second one, which for two and a half years, which was amazing. Um, what kept me going is I believe the faith, the hope of something bigger, of something better, of something, you know, um, of something that, I, I feel like hope is it's probably the, the strongest pillar that uh, humanity can have because it it creates an, a strength to, to get up. It, it, it creates um, a, a passion. It creates a purpose to know that that moment here is not the end. That, that if I keep hoping, if I keep dreaming, mm. then someday whenever that will be it will it will happen and so i think hope has, has such a powerful powerful aspect that that um yeah that it, it just so someone has to to try by themselves to mm-hmm. to really to really understand what hope can do and and, and having faith into a better future yeah, it's just the op- the optimism of that. I believe that, you know, for all of my life, I've been a person who saw the glass half full rather than half empty. And so your resiliency as a child is so inspiring. Do you think if you were experiencing these things, I know you that was your lowest moment, but let's fast forward and let's say Nathaniel is 30, three years ago. Do you think there's a difference between how resilient you were as a child compared to how resilient you might be as a 30-year man, 30-year-old man? Do you think there's a difference there? Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. I think um resilience as any other aspect of life decreases when we don't train it. And uh it, it's the same, like, it's like a muscle in life. Of course, I, I still have, um, f- my, my difficulties today are fully different than when I was a child. Mm-hmm. They might be bigger in some terms, right. but they're not that, you know, super difficult or deep that I will finish here and say, okay, I'm not gonna continue. Yeah. Um, I think like resilience, I say, is it's, it's almost like it's a muscle like anything else in life that mm-hmm. has to be trained. And right. uh, yeah, I, I think we, we, we have also a bit of control to, to choose the resilience. Like, I mean, if I will every day stay in bed and think, uh, 
I don't care about life, mm -hmm. uh, then I, I, I don't choose the resilience process. But if I say, okay, let's go up and do it again, even it's a 10, 100 yeah. times, then we build already the resilience. Right. I love that. And so, because so many people, like I know clients that I've worked with who experience, you know, depression and they're like, you know, I just don't want to do anything. And I know that putting yourself, like you're saying, like you are a testimony to this is what needs to happen. It's like, don't just, and I know this is easier said than done, but it's like, if you keep yourself in action, getting up and doing things, going through your day, doing things so that, you know, getting you into motion helps create that muscle that you're talking about of resiliency, would you say? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Absolutely. And I think we, when we are, you know, when we have a flashback or anything that, that throws us down, then we, we expect from ourselves that we want to, to continue on the same level than we were falling from. Mm. But that's, I think that's not quite the right attitude because um, if you have difficulties, let's say, um, and you, 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 you have any difficulties and you, you have difficulties to get up, um, I think the best thing is to do maybe weekly or something like that. Okay, the first week I'm going to keep going up mm -hmm. and then it slowly comes back and then I can think about the next step what I'm going to do after getting up you yeah. know what I mean right. then I can make something else and so I think we always want to to go it's 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 just life I mean it's it's the same with, with the blood flow it's the same with with stock market, <laughs> if it crashes, you can't straight um, start or be at the same as, mm -hmm. as it, it has time to to go back on the on where it was falling from, and then from there it gets even more stronger. Right. right. So, would you say that, like, if you were going to say, what are the keys to creating resiliency? Is it one step at a time? Is it not trying to will yourself to perform from that same level before you fell, but sort of adjusting and pivoting at the level in which you are now and still continuing to take action. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to do to sometimes you have to go back to where we have coming from to realize that, well, maybe before when we were on the top or whatever, maybe we haven't enjoyed it as much as we should have. Yeah. Because we always wanted more, or maybe we weren't that grateful, or maybe we weren't that satisfied um, when we were on the top and when we on, were on the bottom. And uh, it's just, it's just, um, yeah, I think it, it, it repeats all the time in life that right. we, we go up and then we fall down. We go up a little bit higher than before, fall right. down a little bit deep. And, and uh, it's just part of life to, to cope with that. Mm, that's good. So I know, so right now, I know that you are hopeful, you're optimistic, you are a very positive thinker, but I know something that's paramount and, and a foundation of the work you do with your clients is creating a victorious mindset. Because I feel like there's a difference between just being hopeful and optimistic. You call it a victorious mindset. What are the differences between just being optimistic and positive and being victorious? And how have you created the victorious mindset? I like that question. Powerful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Well, the difference is to be active and not passive. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have a dream, you can hope on things, um, but there's no, you know, there's no different when you lie in bed in the morning and you're hoping about things, but and you never get up. But if you, <laughs> have, you know what I mean? It, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe a person will realize sometimes and will get too straight, but <laughs> we never know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think it, it lies in, the, in, in being active. And by active, I mean not in a way, you know, to strive or to, to be somebody else than you should be. Mm -hmm. It's just being active to, um, to be and do who you are in the moment and what you can do in the moment. Mm -hmm. Like as I said before, if you, if you get out of the bed and then the next step, that's your journey to get to the break, breakfast table. Somebody else might be already, you know, going out of the house. Right. But it's not for you to to control or to to care about. Mm -hmm. um, so the days are different, and the, I love the Victoria's mindset because it. I said previously, um, the, the the mind is such a powerful tool of us. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I do, however, not, however, not believe that it only depends on us. Um, I believe that also that there's a God, a higher power, whatever you want to call it, that mm -hmm. that gives us certain injections, certain leading points where we can go to and mm -hmm. what we can do. And uh, I think so. But the victorious mindset in all that is about, you know, really um, having an setting the mindset or the perspective focusing on being a victor and not a victim in your life Ooh, being a victor and not a victim in your life that's powerful absolutely and so many of us it's like just will yourself to get up until you can continually take that action yeah. wow but then you why are you passionate about this you could be a 33 year old guy who is like I'm alive. I'm just going through this. I'm happy that I'm alive. And I just want to, you know, go and have my business and make money and provide for myself, my family, whatever that is. But why are you passionate on a broader scale? You know, because I know you're a speaker, you have this program, you work with clients. What is the basis of your passion to do this work? Great question. Um, very sure I start. Now, I think the, the, the biggest point is um, when I lost my third kidney transplant with 11 mm -hmm. years old, um, I become a person of faith and wish, you know, that they, they, uh, I, I, I call it philosophy here, which says um, God will work all things together for the good. Absolutely. And yeah. I started to believe that. And over, over the years, I realized that, you know, I said before, there was a leading point. Um, I do not believe that I always were choosing out of myself things, but there were certain leading points that, that got me to the passion to, to realize that any life, any difficulties, any um hardship any bad thing can be turned into something good yes and so i started to believe that and as many of you might know that when you believe something you become or you do it mm -hmm. and uh, so i never imagined you know become a speaker i was probably the, the shyest guy in my school um I, I never learned probably, you know, properly speaking because of my hearing impairment. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's just it's blowing a mind when you start to, to believe that things can turn out for the good. Yeah. Then you realize that everything in, in your life can serve somebody else. Mm -hmm. can, I can take... Uh, the bad things and make live a life that turns it into something good. And uh, so it wasn't, you know, the passion wasn't, yeah, it should come along step by step. Mm -hmm. It was never something that I decided from 
one day to another, I'm going to do that. It's just calm and calm and adapted to talk about what else can I take from my life that looks negative or bad and turning into something good and mm -hmm. then help others to, to get into that as well. Right. I'm a firm believer in that. I, you know, I relate to every single thing that you're saying. Do you, are you a guy who, you know, because I know the mind has to believe it, you know, it's the optimism. Are you a guy who practices visualization? It's like you see yourself doing it. You see yourself on stage, you know, speaking, you see yourself. How important is visualization with your work? 100 Tier of 200, 99. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. No, I think, I think, um, yeah, I, I do it. And uh, my, my wardrobe is full of pictures uh -huh. uh, of future dreams. <laughs> yes. Uh, I had uh, pictures in the past that happened uh, exactly the way I imagined. Um, I do fully believe that. However, I learned that I do not, you know, fully depend on him anymore on myself that it happens. Okay. So I do, I do, I dream big, I visualize it, but then I know it's going to happen one day. Um, I, I call it by God's help because he is bigger, greater than, than myself. Absolutely. Um, if I, if he wouldn't be there or he, if he wouldn't have decided to keep me alive, then I wouldn't be here. So, um, and it, it, it released me from a lot of pressure. You know, when you, when you visualize things and then you think like, oh, I had to finish that by this year, by right. that year. And it, it, it was stressing me out a lot of time in the last <laughs> few years. Yeah. And so I started to, you you know, to say, hey, look, God, you know what I would like to do. And, uh, but I know also that whatever I dream or imagine, you will do it even bigger because mm. um, I know you. Yeah. You are better than me and um, absolutely you, bigger things than myself. And so, yes. yeah. So it's like, so you create the visualization, you create the targets, the goals, you know, all the outcomes that you want and you release attachment to it. You give it to God. Yeah. Did I have that right? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's so powerful because I also have felt that, that pressure. And it's like, you know, because I do a lot of visit, uh, visualization as well. And I set these targets and I go, oh my goodness, I got two days left to, you know, do this thing. And that is two days, how's it going to happen in two days, you know? And then, yeah, and I stress myself out over it. And then I also learned that looking for the things in different ways helps because it's like, sometimes I was so specific with my visualization that I didn't recognize that God, the universe was still giving these things to me because I didn't, I wasn't opening my eyes to see it happening in so many different ways. I was like, oh, well, that is it. Because it was, I was thinking of it so tangibly. It has to be this exact thing. But, you know, like, you know, like the example that I can think of is that like, you know, I set a goal to bring in a certain amount of money. Well, specifically, I was like, oh, that has to be just with my, my coaching, my clients. I was like, no, I just, God helped to bring in more money. And I, you know, it took me a while to go, oh, it can come in so many different forms, right? Yeah. Oh my yeah, goodness. Like yeah. Have, have you experienced that where you were asking for something very specific and it's like, oh, I had that thing last week and I didn't even see it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, as you said, I, I, I think like if we are so specific, we don't uh, expect the supernatural things. Yes. And um, so for me right now, it's like, as you said as well, the, the best opportunities in my life were the ones where I step back from everything and let it come to me. And I tell you, I'm, I'm right now, I'm learning that again because I'm, I'm, uh, 
I get crazy about at the moment about all the marketing stuff that's going on. Yeah, and uh, I'm I'm the least you wanna. I want you know I'm the least person in this world that wants to anything to do with marketing. <laughs> and then I was like thinking, beginning of the what, what what's the purpose of it? I mean, you know why not just stepping back and believing for supernatural yeah. uh, opportunities because they don't cost anything right <laughs> and people if i i also realizing always more when you grow when you focusing on growing and you know being being authentic being relaxed being on rest then you you, you are in this world a big magnet to the people because mm -hmm. people are looking always for for that uh, how do you say that for that specific resting place, mm -hmm. but still having a fulfilled life. Right. And I see a lot of people today in this world getting crazy about hustling around, doing things, this and that. And, mm -hmm. and so if somebody comes into the room who is just working and being yourself, it, it has cracked and that's what I realized that's also where the best opportunities come when people you know just come to you and uh, and then you still or the person that comes to you uh, there's no you know there's just a simple harmonic conversation and yeah. then it will if it has to it will lead into something bigger together and uh, I think that's the most um most released and relaxing way mm. one can one can live yeah. oh i love that that was just beautiful yeah just release the pressure that we put on ourselves yeah. so i know the thing that you have an ebook it's a four step right to unlimit your life can you don't just give the whole ebook right now, but what is a nugget that you can give my listeners to like maybe one of the steps to unlimiting your life? And then they're motivated to go and get the ebook because it's free, right? It's free. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So, and I will put that link at the bottom of the show notes so you guys can get the rest of it. But how about maybe just the first step that you, that, that is that gold nugget inside that ebook? Yeah, I like that. So the first step is nothing else than asking yourself the question, who I am. Ooh, okay. Simple, okay. okay. Difficult question. <laughs> who am I? I like that. And so when you ask yourself that question, and so that's a lot of the work that, that you know, that I do with my clients, because you have to know where you are right now. And so for me, that is like taking responsibility. Who am I? How, how have I created the results that I have in my life today? How do you expand and expound on the who am I in your ebook? Uh, the, the, yeah, I will be the second step to go into what, what am I here for? Mm. I think the more you know yourself, the more you know why, why am I here? Like, what, what, what in the world am I doing in this world? Yeah. <laughs> and this is so, such a crucial question that um i'm gonna tell you it's, it's two questions that will follow you the rest of your life mm -hmm. uh, they will never be a fixed answer there they will always the answer will change or the answer will be need to be readapt depending on, mm -hmm. on how old you are or how old you get or okay. what circumstances you're in and uh, yeah that's two 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 steps yeah. Okay. On my ebook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that. And I know you go into a, a lot more detail. That is so good. So, you know, it's kind of like, who am I and what am I here to do? And I always think of, you know, I, you know, as a coach, you know, we turn the finger back around on ourselves and I question that myself. And I, and I think every now and then I reanalyze that because like you said, it can change because I feel like I'm evolving as a person, you know, and, and my mission is, is evolving as well. Wow. So I know that this is part of your process of helping people flip the switch, right? From living a life by default 
to living a life by design. That's yeah. it. And so that's why that's part of why I was so drawn to you because that's exactly what I try to do is flipping that switch from their conditioning, right? Because I think so many people are living a life that was molded for them from other people by, you know, social media, their family, their, you know, their parents' morals and values. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so what, what is one way you help your clients flip the switch? Great question. I, I always try to, to help them on, on the journey to, to get deeper into who they are mm -hmm. because I think that's still it's, it's just the foundation of life that when you know the more you know again the more you know who you are the higher you can build your life it's like mm -hmm. a fund a big fundament and the stronger that is the, the bigger the house will be the, the you know the, yeah. the stronger the element can be on on the fundament and the same is it with life with um yeah that's that's all i can can tell yeah no yeah yeah we want to keep that that little bit in the box and have them go i love <laughs> that so you know as we begin to wrap up nathaniel how do you work with clients like what how can people get their hands on and, and get in contact with you? I'm going to leave it in the show notes, but just tell us how they can work with you and what you have as an offer and how you work with your clients right now. Yeah, cool. So you can go on my website. That will be the be best place to, to go. It's nathanieltoolbrook.com. Um, so you have the opportunity to be there to to check out my lifestyle in detail but if you scroll down a little bit you also will be able to go on my business website which is unlimitedu.co mm -hmm. um actually on both websites you will get um the ebook for free and uh, if you would like to to have more um you can you can get on a free call on the website on, on you know on the calendly yeah always have to think write down um you can you can check it out uh get in touch with me send me an email um if you yeah get get an ebook um you get 20 percent off if you get in contact or if you uh yeah tell me Tell me uh, in the subscription if you if you get on a free call, then uh, put in uh, podcast Travia, and then I will kick you into uh, twenty discount as well. All right, mentoring or whatever you need for your yourself, your group, or your business. Love that. Okay, so that's a twenty percent discount. Is that specifically if they buy? What what is it that they're buying again, or is it that they're setting up a call with you? No, the call is free. Okay, the call is free, and then uh, if if we see hey whether you need me or mm. I can give you something valuable, then uh, I will kick you in into the twenty percent discount. Got it. Perfect. And if perfect. You, yeah, and if you download the ebook, um, you will see in the description of the ebook that there will be a twenty discount. 20% discount as well with a discount code that um, currently works on email. So mm -hmm. if you want to reach out, please email me on the bottom of the ebook. Uh, it will redirect you directly to my email. And uh, yeah, let me know if I can help you. If you feel like there's something I need that. <laughs> yeah. I want yeah. That. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Got it. And just so that I have it very specific. So, and that's to purchase anything on your website. Is that to work with you as well? Let's say they call and they get, you guys have that first call and you're like, Hey, let's do this. I really want to work with Nathaniel. Is that 20% off? The call is for free. Yeah. Right. But after the call, if they decide, uh, Hey, I want what you have. Yeah. Uh, then on everything, 20%, whether you book, uh, 
one-to-one -one session or you need me for speaking somewhere or you yes. want anything else out of my product that I'm currently offering. There we yeah, go. Twenty percent off. Um, yeah. Perfect. I love it. So, just one final question. You have already done some big things in your life. I'm so inspired by you because of your story, because of your resiliency, your victorious mindset. What is next for you? What's your next big goal? What mountain are you climbing right now? <laughs> Well, <laughs> that's a cool question. Um, right now, I'm, I'm on a journey to clean up some emotional garbage from my that's a, past. That's a, that's a big mountain right there. Yes. It's a big, yeah, it's a big mountain. And I talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I should talk today. Like, uh, oh, my goodness. I never talk. Like, I will get into something like that in my life. Never, ever. But as I say, life goes sometimes as I, as it goes um so this is personally and um, the other thing is probably the biggest dream that i have is also on my um um yeah my wardrobe it's uh to build a non-profit organization mm -hmm. and they built uh, the most modern hospitals in slums wow and uh, so, yeah, I will see how how this is going to work out. I have no clue how it's going to happen, but as I said, That's right. I'm gonna leave on the side <laughs> and the uh, opportunities will come. I love that. Wow, that's huge, Nathaniel. That is huge. And I love how you're like, I have no idea how it's gonna happen. That's how I'm gonna involve the supernatural. That's how I'm gonna involve God, God will, unfold it in front of your eyes you don't need to know how you just need to throw it out there yeah wow that's so powerful Nathaniel this has been such a powerful conversation and thank you so much for sharing your story sharing your gifts with my listeners and with me as well so I thank you for being a guest on my podcast today absolutely you're welcome and it was a, it was a pleasure to to be on this podcast that's a fun time if you like what you're hearing, and perhaps you're interested in having a complimentary conversation with me, click the link at the bottom of the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. If you even want to know more about what I'm up to, head over to TraviaStewart.com. And if you like seeing the videos of the podcast, every episode is on my YouTube channel. Take care, guys.